Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So today we will be discussing the problem power set from the SDE sheet. Now I have covered up till day 11 but I won't be covering the day 12 because these problems are very very simple and this is rarely asked in an interview but power set is uh, important. It might be asked in an interview. So what is a power set? So basically if you consider this string ABC and you try to generate all the possible substrings of it then you can say that I will have an empty substring then a substring as A then a substring as B then a substring as C then a substring as AB then a substring as A and then C then you might say it's not a substring it's a subsequence of a kind of a thing yes that is that is what it means you need to generate all the possible uh, strings that you can get from this given string so if if the length of any string is 3 the number of substrings that can be generated is actually 2 to the power n that is 2 to the power 3 or 8 substrings in this 8 the empty substring is also included so if you have seen my previous video you would be knowing how to generate all the possible substrings using recursion but over here this concept will be using something which is related to bit manipulation so in order to understand that concept, you just need a prerequisite. So I'll be telling you that prerequisite. So if I give you a number, for an example, like 5. Now what is the binary of 5? The, fi the binary of 5 is 1, 0, 1. Okay. And if you know the bit index numbering, it goes on from right to left. So this is the 0th index bit. This is the first index bit. This is the second index bit. And so on it goes on, right? This is the 0 this is the first, this is the second. Now if I ask you a very simple question, if the second bit of 5 is set or not, if I ask you, check if any given ith bit is set or not, then how will you do that? Very simple. So if 5 is 101, one, you'll try to place a 1 here and the rest guys will be 0. And whenever you do an AND, correct, what will happen is this 1 and 1 will become 1 and since you place zeros everywhere, it will become 0, 0. So this number that is generated will be a non-zero number. Yes, this will not be equal to 0. Now, in case, in case someone asked you to check if the first bit, yes, this is the first bit, is that set? So if you place a 1 over here and you place all the other guys to be 0, if you do an AND, the 0 and 1 will give you 0 and all the other guys will be having 0. So this is very simple if you place a one right beneath that bit and you do an and operator and if the number comes out to be not equal to zero you can say that the bit is set if the number comes out equal to equal to zero you can say that the bit is not set now very simple how do you place a one over here because this is the second bit so if you write something like one left shift of i then this thing happens like if you write one left shift of two this is nothing but this only yes because one is this and if you do a left shift of two that means two zeros and then one this is what means by left shift of two correct you place two zeros so very simple this is one left shift of i and if you do a and with n if this guy is not equal to zero then i can say that the ith bit is set and if this guy is equivalent to zero i will say that the ith bit is not set so this is the prerequisite that you will be requiring in order to understand power set so before moving on to the next part of the video let me tell you about coding ninjas now coding ninjas is one of the largest coding education company and they have taught around 50k plus students now they offer you courses in programming in different languages like c plus plus java python they also have courses for machine learning android development data science and web dev the content quality is exceptional as it is made by experts from IIT, Stanford, Amazon and Facebook. They do offer you one is to one doubt resolving support and the average doubt solving time that they take is, is literally the best in the market. Now since the courses are really well structured and so many have benefited from it, I guess you should give it a try and if you feel so, do use the link in the description to avail a discount which will be added above the one which is already present in the website. So guys go and check it out. So the method is very simple. We know that there are at maximum of eight subsequences, correct? So what we will do is we will write numbers from zero to seven. Okay, so let's write them. So once I've written down all the numbers from zero to seven, let's write the bit representation of every number. 
So can I say that the bit representation from 0 to 7 will look something like this? Yes. And now if I do the bit indexing, I know this is the 0th index. This is the first index. This is the second index. So the indexing goes from right to left in a bit. Now let's assume because the string has three guys. So the indexing will be 0, 1, 2. Now if you let's assume 0 means I am not picking up the element into my substring. 1 means I am picking up the element into my substring. Over here, the 0th index says 0. That means do not pick up. Z the first index says 0. Do not pick up. The second index says 0, which means do not pick up. So can I say this is nothing but the empty substring because no one is being picked up. Similarly, can I say the 0th index is saying 1, which means pick the 0th index. That means there will be A. This first index is saying do not. The second index is saying do not. So this will only be a substring A. Over here, the 0th index is saying do not pick up. The first index is saying pick up. So I'll say the first index has a B. So it will be a B. And this is not a pick up. Over here, we have a 0th guy as picked up. The first guy as a picked up. So can I pick the 0th index A and the first index B? So the substring that I'll get is AB. Now if I check over here, the second index is being picked up. So what is at the second index? Only C, right? Over here, the 0th index and the second index has been picked up. So this makes it AC. Over here, the first index and the second index have been picked up, which makes it BC. Over here, the 0, the first, the second, all of them have been picked up, which makes it ABC. So if you carefully observe, I have actually, yes, I have actually generated all these possible substrings and this is the way in which power set works it basically iterates numbers from 0 to 2 to the power n minus 1 and then it basically checks up 0 for not pick 1 for pick and then tries to pick up so if i try to write the code can i say my number my number goes from 0 to 2 to the power n minus 1 so my number can i say goes from 0 to something like 2 to the power n minus 1. Now this can also be written in bit as 1 left shift of n minus 1 because 1 left shift of n is nothing but 2 to the power n. So you can write it as 2 to the power n minus 1, correct? So this is the first for loop. So first time when you get to 0, what are you checking? If the 0th bit is set, if the first bit is set, if the second bit is set, so can I say I will have to iterate from 0 to 2 which is n minus 1. So I have to iterate from 0 to 2 which is n minus 1. And what do I need to check? If the 0th bit is set, if the first bit is set, if the second bit is set. And I do this for every number from 0 to 7. Correct? So let's check. How do you check if the bit is set? I have already taught you that if in the number 0 or 1 or 2 whichever is the number in that if yes i repeat if the bit is set this is the condition probably i can carry a substring which is initially empty so if the bit is set ith bit so can i say the ith guy will be a part of my substring so i can write sub plus equal to s of i and once i have checked for all the bits from 0 1 2 once i've done that i can definitely print my substring and that will make sure that all the substrings are printed in this order. Correct? So this is how my power set code will look. Now if I ask you the time complexity, can I say this external for loop actually runs for b go of 2 to the power n times. Correct? Because it runs from 0 to 7. And the internal for loop runs for b go of n time because you are running from 0 to 2. So that's a b go of n. So for every number from 0 to 7, you're checking from 0, 1, 2. So can I say 2 to the power n and for every number you're checking n. So the time complexity becomes 2 to the power n into n. Whereas the space complexity still stays as we go of 1. So I'll be leaving the link of the practice problem in the description as well as the C++ and Java code for it. So guys, I hope you have understood the entire explanation as well as the code just in case you did. Please, please, please make sure you like this video and if you're new to our channel, do consider subscribing.